As we look to discuss some of these publications on national uh, dailies this morning, we are now being joined by Barrister Elias Ofo, who is um, a legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst. Hello and good morning, Barrister. Good morning to you. It's wonderful to have you join us on the program. The pleasure is always mine. All right, very quickly, let's uh, set the ball rolling. Yesterday marked uh, the FCT minister's one year in office since assuming the ministerial position. And uh, he celebrated these by hosting a media party where he made some very, very strong statements and uh, warned the PDP concerning um, conversations around him exiting the party. Firstly, what, what do you make of the internal crisis that has rocked the uh, People's Democratic Party uh, in the last couple of years? Anyway, um, as a major opposition party, I know that um, interest, interest aggregation, interest segregation, which is part of politics, is um, always expected in a, in a, in a, a big party like a People's Democratic Party. Um, a week here had been controversial too. Um, all the way from Port Harcourt, where he was a governor, and down to Abuja, where um, he has been made a FCT minister. Um, and as a controversial figure, um, he has been into a whole lot of things. Um, positive, and then what uh, some quarters could be tagged uh, and not too positive, and all that. Um, I think, to start with, exiting people, the People's Democratic Party is his constitutional right. And for whatever reason, he's defending um, a stance that he never intended or he never did that. Um, that is best known to him, actually. Um, but the, the cardinal thing is that the party politics and all that, um, especially with a party like People's Democratic Party and all that. And of course, you know that um, um, Yeson Wike was instrumental to an extent for the, for the victory of the incumbent, talking of uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, the president, uh, president of Nigeria. So um, it's actually a big dilemma for him, and um, probably I am thinking he's um, working assiduously to see how he could best achieve his interest in, uh, in, in, in the present climb. Remember that 2027 is in the offing, and then you can imagine what uh, the future uh, holds for him um, in terms of um, his uh, interest, perpetuating his interest in the in the, the present administration. So it, it is some, uh, something that, um, um, I mean, the permutators um, uh, would be uh, 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 grappling with. But the truth of the matter is that, uh, personally, I do not see uh, Wiki staying so long in PDP. That is my own personal uh, issues. And of course, when you know that there, there are, they say there's no smoke without fire. Out of various insinuations, 100 insinuations, you would definitely pin down elements of truth. That, that is what I can say for now. Well, well um, Barrister, the you know, FCT minister has uh, made another statement branding uh, Adolphus Mwabara unfit to be BOT chairman of the PDP. And at the same time, we are also seeing statements coming from uh, the party's national chairman in talking about Damagum, uh, who is also being who has also been on the hot seat and calls have been made for his exit from the party. What I want to know is, considering the fact that the minister is a PDP man, a PDP member, who is currently working for an APC government, do you perhaps see the possibility of a defection in the future? And if yes, how soon are we seeing Wiki exiting, even though he has mentioned that he's not one to run away from a fight? It's, 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 uh, one thing you have to understand is this. Politics remains politics. We have seen, uh, 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 what do I call it? We have, we have seen, um, uh, deviation from previous statements. People do not hold on to their words in politics. We have seen it play out in Nigeria a whole lot of times. Forget about the promises, forget about the oath taken, um, voluntarily by self, people saying over their dead bodies, People saying it cannot happen. We have seen it in terms of Chayamo, the president Minister of Aviation. We have seen it in different quarters. People coming to make statements. Even people that previously criticized the Indian president and said all sort of all sort of things about him, they are presently working in this administration. People that made statements and said 
This will never happen with them. Of course, we've seen that with Nelson Wike, actually. He criticized this administration. He said they were not doing anything. He said, well, why would people clap hands for them? But they're not just doing, I can't just repeat it. I can't just repeat verbatim how he made that statement. But it's over there in the media, circulating. So what is the friction in this circumstance? It's nothing to him. In terms of exiting PDP, I think it's, 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 it's already, it's already, um, I have to put it. It's already a walkover. It's already done. I think it's imminent, actually, from my own personal observation. It's imminent. The only thing is to see how to handle it. And I guess that is presently what he is grappling with. As in, how do I do this to make it seamless? And all that. He's already there. What, 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 in, talk, principle, talk, talk. in principle, he is in APC. In principle, he is in that the party already. So you cannot run with the hand, hunt with the hounds. It, it's not, it doesn't happen anywhere. It doesn't happen anywhere. Well, uh, talking about the um, Godfatherism that he has been obviously accused of countless times by you know different individuals from different quarters of the country and uh in in relation to his fight with the current river state governor governor sim fubara uh a lot of have been set up in the past to you know, make up for the loggerhead that is currently rocking the party especially in river state however a statement on the front page of the Nigeria Tribune newspaper also says that uh, main opposition has inaugurated a reconciliation and disciplinary committee to solve some of these issues. Are we, continue, are we going to continue seeing committees after committees, reconciliations after reconciliations, and yet there isn't any form of progress in terms of quelling these disputes and forging ahead? I think, I think um, that's a kind of leap service to this crisis. Is a new service to this crisis. I said it in previous sessions that unless there's a definitive statement, unless actions are taken in very strong terms to forestall this interference in the affairs of a state, it has been a recurrent decimal in Nigerian politics. And the moment, the earlier it stopped, the better for the state governors and order. The state governor is the state, it is the chief executive officer and, and, and occupies uh, holds the mantle in, 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 in their state. So, so this interference, unless the president makes definite step to forestall all this, I, I don't think it, the committees are going to do anything. Setting up a committee, this committee, that I don't think, I don't think it does, it does any good to, to the present crisis in, in River State and all that. Honestly, because this interference is becoming so overbearing. It has, it has lasted so long. It's through the governor is trying to say, yes, it doesn't affect me in any way. I'm still working. I'm still going about my the state of, uh, uh, the, uh, the affairs of the state and then making tremendous achievements. But we all know that this hampers the development of that state. The scorecard is going to be read to Nigerians at the end of his tenure. So that is the thing then. I think he's like dying in, by installment. That is what is being pushed to Fubara. What, what, what? To die by installment. That's what it is. The well, earlier he is rescued, the better. He could be dwindling, and he might not, because of one or two things, not raising up his head from that tempest to say, I need a help, to cry May Day. He may not be free to cry May Day. That is just it. He may not be free to do that. So the earlier the president comes in to say, enough is enough. Leave this man to work. And of course, Nigerians know the bone of contention and all that. It's just the war of ego. The war of ego. So, so, so the, 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 whoever is Fomenting this trouble, of course, the Nigerians know who's fomenting the trouble. Should be called to order. There should be a definite step to that direction. Instead of just playing the charade, and people are not benefiting from the governance. So, so that's, that's, that's what it is. Well, well, Barrister, for considering the fact that um, the PDP used to be, you know, the domineering party in the country uh, since the advent of democracy in Nigeria in 1999. However, in recent times, we've seen quite a dwindle in their popularity with the populace. Do you perhaps think that the golden days of the PDP is finally coming to an end? The golden days have come to an end. It's not finally coming to an end. Unless there's an aggregation, unless there's a new frontier in this, in this opposition, I don't think anything will resurrect from the PDP. 
That is the thing there. Of course, you know that APC is a metamorphosis of PDP. <laughs> They're so going to change the fact that APC is just, um, is just uh, emanating from the PDP. But be that as it may, I think um, a lot of factors have come up in recent times that would um, bifurcate, by, that, would, that would dwindle, uh, so to speak, the, anything, anything that remains of PDP. Whatever effort they put in to resurrect the party, I don't think it's going to stand in any way. The only thing is new aggregation. And of course, even from fundamental, commonsensical perspective, you will understand that the name PDP is, 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 is in simple terms, old in the, uh, in the years of Nigeria. That is the thing there. So you need a new aggregation. You need a new frontier. You need a new rubric. You need, you need a new nomenclature to start with. So how would that happen is to come up and then look at some stakeholders. Look at new ideologies. Look, look at new frontiers. New realignment to come up with something new, to come up with new things. Because it, it's, just, it's just like really now the old thing, reinventing the wheel. That's what I've been seeing, seeing in the policy in Nigeria. That is the thing there. And that's the thing that kept us where we are. So let us see something new. What is BDP? Well, let, 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 let's hope that something new springs up and drives the wind of change across Nigeria that most Nigerians, I believe, would want to see. Let's, uh, you know, close the curtains on this particular discussion and move on to something else, Barrister. Uh, one year since most ministers assumed office in their various uh, ministries or sectors, and uh, there's a wind of information about a possible reshuffle of ministerial cabinet by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now, uh, we all know that some ministers have performed out of them while others have formed. I would not want to mention names, but what do you make of this uh, development and news of a possible reshuffle of ministerial cabinet? Anyway, I actually, because I know that um, uh, Pola Ahmed Tinubu's uh, predecessor, um, 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 Muhammad Buhari, uh, yes. held on to his uh, cabinet for a very long time. Even when he made some changes, it was, it was just a handful. But what I can say is that this is, this is um, synonymous with democracy that we are practicing. You need to run the race with your team. If the team, if there's anything that's going to pull you down from that team, then you need to stand up and face the reality. Look at Kenya, what happened in Kenya. After the mega protest in Kenya, you see what uh, Ruto did. So, so that is democracy for you. I may not see this coming in Nigeria. I may be seeing it coming in Nigeria. I may, but the, the fundamental truth is that for you to achieve success in what you're doing, you need to always review your team. That is the thing there. And to give, and to score the present uh, cabinet of Ebola uh, Ahmed Tunubu, you, you can see that um, at least uh, you know what Nigeria is facing. I had always thought, I had always questioned who are his advisors? Who are the advisors of the incumbent president? Who are his advisors? But, but, but in, in your opinion, in your opinion, Barista, what particular ministries do you think need new ministers, more proactive and more uh, willing ministers who are ready to work in order to boost the productivity of such ministries? If I start mentioning it, I can almost mention Well, well you can just mention a few as we look to wrap I up. Can, I can almost mention all of them, but I don't think I want to do that. I, I, what I can say is that he has to look down deep. He has to look down deep and see what he could do. If, if, I, if I want to be so critical, if I want to be so truthful tr tr myself, I will say 80% should be rigid. 80% should be rigid. He knows. The president himself knows. We're not the people to tell him. He has the scorecards on his table. Most of the time what we face in this part of the world is politics. When I say politics, politics is not in the academic sense. Politics not in the true sense of the word, but politics in the peculiarity of Nigeria, in the peculiarity, in the peculiarity of trying to benefit people, trying to pay people for probably one or two things that contributed uh, uh, during electionary campaigns and all that. He has brought this country to its knees. So you have to be critical. You have to look down deep. If I were the president, you don't need to advise me on the ministries that are working, on the cabinet members that are truthful to themselves, that are very diligent and efficient. What are you trying to tell me? We are not the people to tell the president what to do. Look, look at what is happening in the country. I had always thought about it and said, who is advising the president? Does the president know what the, the, the plight of Nigerians? 
Does the president know what the common man faces on the street and all that? The, 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 the Naira has lost grip on the purchasing power. People can no longer go about their normal businesses because of insecurity. It has been there, they say, that what is happening now is taking a different, a different tone. What are we doing about it? And it's, because, it, it's just the same news every day, the same information every day, the same approach, nothing different and all that. Well, well, well you, that. You, you, have, you, have mentioned, you have mentioned two things that are of interest here. Uh, the Naira dwindling every day and, you know, insecurity uh, being on the rise. But I just want you to touch on these three sectors in a few s minutes before we wrap up. Uh, cert certainly, we know that the agricultural uh, sector isn't really thriving well in the country. So what do you make of the performance of the uh, Minister of Agric and also uh, the performance of the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wale Edun, who is driving the Nigerian economy as we look at it now, just in a minute as we wrap up? I, 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 I'm not scoring them. I'm not scoring them anything near average. That is the thing, there, especially agriculture. What you are facing is tough history. What you are facing is political statements. There's nothing. There's no definitive action towards that. That's what you're facing. What is the, what, where is the agri-credit to start with? How are you making sure this is available to people to create incentive towards the sector? And then it's all about suffrage. It's all about, it's all about speaking English every day. Every day you hear about this and about that. This is what we are going to, to do. Of course, Mr. President said that. And people criticize it. I think you're just reading out what looks like political statement. There's nothing concrete about it. I mean, let us be truthful to ourselves for once. That's, that's just what I can say for now. That's what I have to say. About the economy, of course, you've, you've seen it. The dollar uh, going against the Naira, we have seen it once a time, and a lot of English were spoken about it. The same thing is happening today. So it, it, it's just, it's just charade. It's just charade. I, I, oh. We do not have to tell the president what to do. Of oh. course, everything is looking us in the face. We know that oh. he needs to sit up. He needs to sit up. 27, 2027 is coming. It's in the auction. Oh, all right, Barista. The the message. I, I'm afraid time is not on our side and we must wrap up this segment. But I want to thank you very much for finding the opportunity to come on the program and uh, share your thoughts with us. Thank you, too. You're thank welcome. You. Yeah.